Hello artists! So like always we begin with our invisible glove before we paint. Today I am going to show you how to um, tint a canvas before starting your grisaille, imprimatura, or verdaccio. So we're going to do our first assignment on our canvas pad and I've got my black and my white set up. To tone my canvas, I have to make a nice middle value of gray. If I go too light, It'll be hard to distinguish my lights. And if I go to dark, it'll be hard to distinguish my darker value. So a nice middle value is what I want. Um, and I'm gonna mix a, a lot of this right now because I'm also gonna use this as the base for my imprimatura and for the verdaccio. All right, so now I have to wet the surface of my canvas paper and I'm gonna do that with a rag or with a brush. It's a lot faster and easier with a rag. And I'm wetting it in the same way or for the reason that you would wet your brush before you ever paint, it just helps the substrate absorb your paint. I'm gonna take that rag or brush and I'm gonna just spread that. And if my surface is wet enough, you see how easily that spreads? And it's a lot faster than if I try to brush it on to a dry substrate. Now whenever you see um, examples of the old masters or a contemporary master using this technique and you see a toned canvas, this is how they've done it. If you're working with oils, you would first wet the surface of your canvas paper with your thinner, which would be an oil, an oil-based solvent. And I want to show you, see how that's a nice gray. I want to show you something just so you can see. Where's my white paint? That this is much lighter than white paint. And much lighter than black. So you want a nice medium value to work with. Now this is, if I want to work with a grisaille, remember you have a choice in whether you're gonna work with Grisaille in Primatura or Verdaccio. So let's see what happens if I want to work with Verdaccio. Now remember I have, I already have created a gray here. And so all I really need to do to make a Verdaccio is add some yellow ochre to my gray. And that should tint it greenish. It'll start to give me a kind of 
military green. Still a little on the yellow side. Let me add a little bit more black. Put a little drop of water on my black for now. Don't ask why I'm still mixing on paper plates and on because Stick Flick still hasn't given me my paper palette. There we go, now I've got a nice green. Notice that it's not too bright a green. I want it to be nice and grayed down. And just like before, I wanna wet this canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and use the rag to make my life easier, especially since my rag is already dirty with the gray. I can see where it's wet and where it isn't. I can grab some of that green and spread it. Now, when you're working with a Verdaccio, Verdaccio, you're not gonna be able to mix the same exact gray green every single time. It's gonna be very difficult when you're first beginning getting acquainted with these paints. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be exact. It's actually more interesting if it isn't. Let's take a, diff let's take a look at the difference. Do you see the difference between the gray and the green. See the difference in color? Let's try in Prematura mixing the brown. Now remember that brown is simply a dark yellow. So I am going to take my yellow ochre and a cadmium. And mix those two together to make an orange. And now to this orange, I'm gonna grab some black. I didn't have enough black left over. Let me add some more black. Here we go. You see, I have a nice brown now. It's a really pretty flesh tone right there. A nice medium brown, not too dark, not too light, which is remember what we want for tinting of our canvases. We want it to be not too light and not too dark. And so let's see the difference. Now artists, when you are done painting, you want to make sure that you spread your rag out to dry so it doesn't get moldy because it can you see how easily this material spreads if my canvas is wet and the same thing is true with stretched canvases or gessoed paper or canvas board. It doesn't matter what your substrate is. If you wet it first before you start painting, the paint will spread a lot easier. All right, so I have to let this dry, my rag, letting it hang off the side of my table. So there's my gray brown for Imprimatura. Let's compare that to 
a greenish gray for Verdaccio. And a regular gray for Grisai. Notice that in each case, it's a middle tone. In each case, the value and the color is neutral. Look at what happens. This is very interesting with the Grisai, the pure black and white Grisai, which is just gray, it's completely neutral, starts to take on a cool or a bluish tint, even though it's not real, when you place it next to a warm color. That's that simultaneous contrast. Look at it next to the brown. That really starts to look a little blue because brown is a dark orange. All right, artists, so this will let you know what you have to do. So once you have tinted your um, canvas paper, you only need to choose one. Choose Grisai, choose Imprimatura, or choose Verdaccio. So once you have tinted your canvas paper, either gray or greenish or brownish, you can then sketch out your image, the image that you've chosen to paint. Artists, before you clean up your palette and stop painting your, um, for the day, I want you to start treating your sketchbook almost like a scientist uh, treats their lab um, experiments. This is, remember, where we did our color wheel and our value sketches. It is also where we tried our monochromatic and analogous color sketches and our intensity scales. And we tried our analogous complementary simultaneous contrast and extension experiments. And today, before leaving, I went ahead and I recorded my mid gray plus yellow ochre, my yellow ochre plus cadmium red and black, and my white and black grounds. And this is to help you keep a record of your color experiments and experience. So I wanna make sure before we are done for the day that you remember to always, before you stop, if you've created a color for the first time, that you go ahead and you record in your sketchbook how you created it. Take a color swatch and write down your notes so that when you come back at a different date to paint something, you remember how did you paint it. You might wanna return to this brown or to this Verdaccio some future date to do another painting or to paint something else and you, you'll want to know how you arrived at that color that you liked so much. Before we finish today is to make sure that before you put away your materials every time that you clean your brushes really well. And after you clean them with your water and with your rag or, or paper towel, add a little soap and see if you can see what I'm doing. I'm kind of just going around in a little circle so that the soap goes down into the ferrule and dissolves any paint that has um, been drawn up by capillary action in here. And then rinse your brush one more time. And then don't forget to also wipe down your um, palette knife. And if you take care of your brushes, you take care of your palette knife, each and every time you use them, they will last you for many years. Happy painting. I'll see you in the virtual.